with another interview at the APOR conference, this time with Chase Harrison, who is uh, an instructor of survey research at the program on survey research at Harvard University. And you've presented uh, a second paper at this conference, follow-up on one you did last year, both of which looked at survey accuracy in the, in the presidential and Senate and gubernatorial polls of 2008. You looked at primaries I looked at primaries. Last year and and so this year, this year, what I looked at were statewide races and and the national presidential. So I looked at the the presidential overall studies that we've we've all looked at. And you were looking to not rank individual firms, but to look at types of surveys. I was trying to look at types of surveys. Are there differences in types of surveys? One question is, does it matter what the sample size is? Does it matter whether it's an IVR survey right. or an internet survey, other sorts of things? Does the, the, the field period, how long something's in the field matter? Um, so what I, what I try to do broadly and what I'm doing in this project um, kind of with a number of papers is looking at looking at the field methods. So what are the differences between field methods? What are the differences in the forecasting methods? So, so the things that, that we do in political polls that, that aren't really survey based but, but are more, more the, the science that's specific to political polling. And then how do things work in different types of elections? So electoral context. So my, my impression, having uh, seen them both, yeah. is that what you found that the effects you found were either they, they either did, there weren't any, there weren't differences, or the differences were inconsistent or or uh, uh, hard to interpret. Well, if you're looking at fair? methods, if you're looking at methods overall, um, there weren't there were not there, there were not significant differences, although there were some from time to time, but there was nothing consistent. So there's no consistent guidance saying either get a larger sample size or get a smaller sample size or use use IVR or don't use IVR or use internet or don't use the internet. I mean, internet polls have all sorts of sample problems, so let's step away from that for them for a moment. But in general, I didn't find any consistent and anything consistent there. Um, okay. Now, here's the hard question. So, if, if the, there was one very prominent uh, uh, Aporite uh, this morning uh, who repeated what I think is a philosophy of a lot of folks that methods matter. It's the reason why we do this conference. And people, you know, we're very scientific approach to to sampling and, uh, yeah, it's, and yet we don't see much evidence of it mattering in terms of the election result. What do you? I mean, where do we go with that? Well, the two things I would think of is, first of all, we were really looking at one election cycle this year. And, and so we had a very, very broadly based victory. We, we had a, a large democratic shift. And, and the places where I did see differences were in cases where things went contrary to what we might have expected, where incumbents held on to things um, more more often. So so part of what I would say is we shouldn't really be generalizing from one election. The second thing I think of more in terms of survey methods is all I'm looking at here is predictive accuracy. Right. The only thing I'm looking at is how accurate is the poll. This is some people use econometric markets to forecast elections. The other people other people use political knowledge, they use expertise and if what we're trying to do is 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 forecast an election and forecast right. the winner of an election. Um, we need a different tool than we do if we're trying to measure public opinion right. or understand why. And, and what we didn't look at and, and what we pretty clearly know when we look at differences in methods on questions such as attitudes and, and all sorts of me measurement issues, and this, is, this isn't the work I was working on here, but this is, this is very clearly understood um, among survey methodologists that there are big differences in some of the questions that we use to interpret meaning and to interpret substance. So if we want to understand why people voted. Let me, let me wrap this up and ask that a slightly different way. Um, I, there is similarly, uh, I think, a lot of folks who feel that predictive accuracy in an election uh, is not a great measure of survey quality, yet I think the most common question I had from ordinary users of surveys last year, from reporters to, to folks who read our site, is who's the most accurate pollster? Uh, is this an accurate poll? Uh, how do I know that? So where do we, you know, uh, is that is that faith in accuracy misplaced? Well, I think I, I I think that's asking the wrong question. The question is really, 
who has the best answers for the question that I'm asking. So to use the, the, an election outcome, to use the ability to predict an election as a measure of accuracy for other sorts of things or as a measure of reliability for data right. is, is, is very questionable. We, we know a lot about how to, how to forecast and predict elections. That's different than understanding how to measure attitudes. We also know things about that, but they're not necessarily the same skills. Okay, very good. Chase Harrison, thank you very much. Thank you. It's always a pleasure.